Howdy, I'm Kerry Cheshire, president of Texans for Fiscal Responsibility. And today we're going to be talking about why Texas suffered an energy crisis in February 2021 and what we can do to strengthen our state and ensure Texans aren't left out in the cold next winter or roast this summer. To begin, let's understand where Texas gets its electrical power. According to ERCOT, which stands for the Electric Reliability Council of Texas and is responsible for administering the state's electrical grid, Texas gets nearly half of its electricity from natural gas. Coal is at 20 percent and nuclear is at 10.8 percent. We call these sources of energy reliable energy. Because of the way they operate, these energy sources are reliable and relatively easily adjustable, depending on the need for electricity. However, Texas also gets a large degree of energy from wind at 20.3% and solar energy. Both of these energy sources, however, are unreliable. In favorable conditions, these power sources can produce a lot of power. But if the wind doesn't blow or the sun doesn't shine, the power simply isn't produced. This imposes costs on the electrical grid in terms of both operation and reliability. Think of it like this. Imagine there's a town where everyone buys apples every day. Traditionally, the town has been served by a couple grocery stores. But one day, Farmer Joe shows up right outside the grocery store. He's planted a couple apple trees himself, and he wants to sell some apples. Now, it was expensive for Farmer Joe to plant the apple trees. But now that they're already there, his cost of producing apples is relatively small. As a result, he can sell them for cheaper prices than the grocery stores who have to buy their apples from other farmers. So what does Farmer Joe do? He simply prices his apples cheaper than the grocery store. Now, he doesn't have that many, but everyone headed to the grocery store always buys him out before they even walk down the aisle and purchase the rest of the apples they need. The downside to Farmer Joe's stand, outside of his large capital investment in growing the trees, is that his apples are only there some of the time. Sometimes squirrels get to them. Sometimes there's a drought. Sometimes they don't produce as much. His apples are effectively sometimes apples. They're a lot less reliable, and folks can't always count on him to provide them with the apples they need. The manager of the grocery store isn't the biggest fan of Farmer Joe and his sometimes apples. After all, he has to pay a lot of money to make sure he's always fully stocked up on apples the town needs, and he pays a cost to maintain an always apples inventory, all while he is constantly undercut by Farmer Joe. Meanwhile, there's a group of hippies in the town who say Farmer Joe's apples are better for the environment. That rather than buy apples from outside the city, the townsfolk should have more homegrown apples from stands like Farmer Joe's. They convince the city council to give tax breaks and incentives to Farmer Joe so he can plant more apple trees, all while increasing the costs on grocery store managers. They're relatively successful, and over a few years, Farmer Joe has planted more and more apple trees. He sells more and more sometimes apples. But these sometimes apples are always sold cheaper than always apples. And so the grocery store managers who are missing out on sales are even less happy. They're losing out on sales, and they aren't being rewarded for maintaining inventories of apples in case of a shortage. Some of them decide not to expand their apple storage facilities. Others decide to close down their grocery stores altogether rather than continue competing against subsidized competition. But one day a big snowstorm comes in and it freezes all of Farmer Joe's apple trees. There are no sometimes apples to be had. But the cold hasn't diminished the town's desire for apples. In fact, even the town's long-haired hippies want more apples than ever, so they can make hot apple cider and apple pie and other things to keep warm. Good thing the grocery store always has apples. They have always apples. And so these hippies and everyone else in the town rush into the store, and they buy out all of the always apples he has but there aren't enough. The grocery store manager is happy folks are buying apples, but he notes that maybe if they hadn't provided so much in terms of subsidies to Farmer Joe, he might have been able to expand his inventory and have enough always apples for the town right now. This is where we'll leave our hypothetical scenario and note that in the real world, we are not talking about simple apples. We're talking about electricity, which not only powers our TVs, computers, and modern convenience items, but also life and death necessities, like oxygen generators, heat, and other items. The senior citizen home can go without apples for a week in January or July, and they'll probably be okay. But can they go without heat or air conditioning? Not as easily. So what can we do to strengthen our grid and generation capabilities, 
and make sure events like what happened in February of 2021 don't happen again. One thing we can do is end state subsidies that flow money to unreliable energy. Chapter 313 and Chapter 312 tax abatements are often given to unreliable energy providers by local governments, distorting the market and exacerbating problems with the grid. Another thing we could do is require all power providers to be at least partially reliable in order to sell electricity through the grid. Going back to our Farmer Joe and his sometimes example, the city could require that Farmer Joe always have at least 10 apples in stock if he wants to sell apples to townsfolk. Another option is to privatize power utilities and take them out of the control of city councils, which often have their own agenda, and make them more responsive to customers and shareholders. While further reforms are most assuredly needed, action by the Texas legislature on these three items, ending state subsidies to unreliable power through Chapter 312 and 313, requiring power providers to be at least partially reliable, and ending government control of electrical generation would go a long way to preventing a future crisis. For more information on this issue and other potential reforms to create a better Texas for taxpayers, visit texastaxpayers.com.